talk about it later. It just depends. It was a, uh, I wouldn't mind doing it at some point, but it was a, uh, it was a knee-jerk reaction. And then I completely forgot about it. Um, I was on vacation. I was offline until I got a reminder from Martin that I had filled in my questionnaire. And I was like, ooh, I forgot I was even on the list. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I um, it was just it was not the right time for me to make an account. Of that. And I basically, after being told I couldn't do it for years, I just. <coughs> Can't tell me I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so, not the smartest thing I've done recently. Time to get started. Oh, that's the wrong window. So many windows. Okay. So welcome to the NTP working group. Um, we have a pretty short and concise agenda today. Let's see who's online. Um, Um, so this is the note well that you signed when you uh, that you agreed to when you register for the meeting. Everybody should be familiar with it. Uh, if you have any questions about what it contains, please feel free to ask the HRI or our area director, Eric. Um, a few other just sort of general administrative notes. Uh, there is a uh, online notes tool. It's it's uh, linked from one of the dots on the agenda page. Uh, so please help contribute to the minutes. Um, we found the fastest way for us to get minutes actually published is to use that tool and then so uh, add things in if you think things are missed. Uh, also, uh, we do have a fair number of remote uh, participants. So if you could please use the Q tool, that would be good. If you have not scanned the QR code, um, that's how you register your attendance at the meeting. If you're in person, obviously, if you're online, you, you uh, already logged in, so you're there. Um, and so uh, the hand is the cue tool if you have missed that, but uh, I'm pretty sure by now most of you have gotten into that part of it. Uh, and then finally, please be con clear, concise, and respectful, and act according to the uh, IETF Code of Conduct. Uh, so with that, our agenda for the day, we have some administrative and agenda bashing, which is what we're currently doing. Uh, and then we have the list of updates, including um, a hack the update from the hackathon that we did the over the weekend. And um, most of these uh, are pretty straightforward based on updated drafts. So um, with that, just to go through uh, document status and things that are not currently on the agenda for today, um, uh, for, first of all, um, the um, Kronos document is now, uh, has been approved and is in the RFC editor queue. So um, when it gets announced as an RFC, obviously the, the working group will be notified. Uh, but uh, congratulations to Netta and all of the co-authors that she had for all of the excellent work and uh, responsiveness in getting that document through. Uh, the enterprise profile, uh, it was, updated for part 
of the um, some of the issues that we had discussed, but both Doug and I missed Eric's comments, and so we have one more round of updates to do to get that uh, moving. Uh, so with that, that takes us back to uh, the NTP registries draft. Um, so we do have a a very uh, useful, and since you sent it in, I'm going to show it. <laughs> uh, so we have this NTP registries draft that uh, Rich has been working on, and uh, when you're ready, I will go to the next slide. Okay, so yeah, presented last time, got some feedback, and next page, yeah, I forgot to do it, so. <laughs> so Honestly, the best policy. Any questions? So um, <laughs> I think this is pretty close to to being done. Uh, it's very close to being done. There's some minor points like X dash or X or, you know, on the privacy thing. And at this point, it's been a while. I don't care. So I'm going to just take all the recommendations and we'll put out a new draft probably a week or so after this meeting. Uh, okay, Eric, thank you. Uh, I think there, there's one thing I'm tracking that I need to do for this, and that is find. Um, some people to act as designated experts. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, so, if uh, people have ideas about whether or not they'd like to be a designated expert, or you know, please contact the chairs, or contact me, okay. or contact Rich, or whatever. So, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the guidance to the experts in there. So, uh, sure. I've been, you know, just FYI, I'm the, one of the designated experts for TLS. And if anyone wants to know what the job is, it's really simple. Right? Ayanna sends you an email saying, do you approve this? And you look at it and you say yes or no. As long as there's an inter at least an internet draft for it, then it's good. Which usually has a guidance to experts. Yeah, it's in the section. Doc. Yeah, so that's how it goes. Okay. All right. Um, um, and it's not out of shame, but I've got a conflict, so I'm going to go. No. <laughs> well, you've already no. <laughs> yeah. So one, one quick question. Yeah. So you forgot to update. Do you have a rough time scale for updating? Uh, within a week. Of this of this week ending. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, within within two you know within two weeks from now. Okay, thank you. That's great. Um, I think it's um, I might have picked the wrong ones. Let's see if I did. And I did. Sorry about that. So it's the other set of slides. Um, there we go. David? Ah, <laughs> uh, leaving in this one. <laughs> yeah, so apologies for the opening slide and not having the working group title in there. Um, I forgot on Sunday. Uh, anyways, the hackathon, uh, we did quite a bit of work on NCP v5 during uh, this hackathon. Um, fortunately, not that much. Uh, next slide, please. Unfortunately, so our goal was basically uh, the goal that I at least went uh, with my colleague, uh, Tom, I went into the week with, weekend with, was to get uh, draft support fully integrated into uh, at least one uh, NTP client's uh, main branch since we developed one that was an obvious target, could target our own. Uh, we managed to do that. Um, we also got it working with NTS. Um, so NTS and NTPv5 for now, at least we're at a point where we can demonstrate that it works. There's no real surprises there as far as we can tell. Um, interoperability, unfortunately, is still an open question. Um, we're the first to implement this. so. If anybody wants to implement an NTS uh, client supporting uh, also NTPv5 or an NTS server also supporting NTPv5, please do so and please let me know. Um, there was also some further exploration of the rough time draft by Christer. Um, unfortunately, not much came out of that. Um, so in terms of results, what did we get? Well, uh, next slide, please. So we've got uh, NTP v5 support in the NTP DRS mainline, uh, the main branch. It should be in the next uh, release that we do. It will probably stay behind the feature flag for quite a while because we don't want to put this on people who don't like to run experimental stuff. 
Um, and they set up a public test server at the IP address mentioned here. It also supports NTS. Uh, if you ask it, if you start a TLS session with it, it'll give you its certificates. They're privately signed certificates. Um, so you'll need to do a bit of trickery to get it to work, but it shouldn't be too hard. If you have any questions on either of those, please let me know. Uh, the server I'm planning to keep up for the, at least the remainder of this week. After that, we might need to look a little bit because it does cost us some money and we don't have that much budget for this. Um, there's a few minor things that we learned during uh, the hackathon. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so there's still some discussion to be had about the upgrade protocol. Um, the way me and Miroslav have been talking about is on the mailing list. If you have any opinions on that, please let us know there. Um, and for NTS, I needed some minor draft updates. There's a pull request open for that. And I also send an email about that on the mailing list. So if any of you are interested in that, take a look at that. Um, so that was basically about it from me. Are there, if there are any questions, let me know. Um, Christopher, did you want to talk at all about rough time? Or are you? No is an acceptable answer. It's not much use. Okay. There are three different ways of drafts being used, and they're all incompatible. So it's kind of. I guess I should have. If... Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the NTPv5 requirements specification. Uh, James is online. I don't know, James, if you want to say anything about it. Um, we do have an updated draft. Um, I don't know how many people here have read that draft. One? No? Um, I guess the real question, let me see if James is. I'm here. Oh, excellent! I, I was I I uh, moved away moved away from the window and, and couldn't uh, couldn't quite see the queue. Why can't I see the queue? Um, so, did you have anything you wanted to say, James? So, yeah, I published a new version nearly two months ago uh, with all of the changes uh, based off of feedback from Miroslav and from uh, other contributors. Sorry, I've slipped on names today. Um, and I haven't received any feedback yet. Um, and is this, is this the time now where I uh, uh, nag you again for working group last call? Uh, yes, this is the time that you do that. Um, I, I see Doug has entered the queue, so we'll see if he has something to say first. Go ahead, Doug. Are you speaking, Doug? Oh, there we there go. Sorry, I was muted. You Can you hear me now? Okay. I, I did have a, a few comments on it, actually. I just looked at it this morning, so I'm sorry I didn't get to that sooner. Um, in section four five, it says uh, supporting smearing algorithms must be defined or referenced. Um, are are there like standards for smearing? I, I thought that was sort of all done ad hoc by a particular organization. I'm not sure if that's a requirement that can be met. So I. The, the, the problem that we have with smearing algorithms or smearing timescales is that there are some common ones of the mid, uh, midday to midday approach, but 
but it's not the only one out there. So uh, that we've, we've had various emails on the list about this in the past, and, and the obvious one is uh, Bloomberg, which has a completely different scale. I think the requirement is, is that if we're going to specify the support for smearing, there should be a way that clients know what that smearing is and over what time period and scale and, and whatever. Um, how we define that, that could be the part of the spec or separate or, or you know, open to interpretation. But I think we would be foolish not to have that information defined somewhere. Okay, well then, uh, this, this would be one of the places where the requirements in the current draft uh, are not in agreement. Yep. Uh, another comment I had, uh, let's see, it, this is a minor one. Um, there's a section 5.0 non-requirements. Um, I, I would recommend changing the name to out of scope topics because things like may and should are technically not requirements, but they're not what you're talking about. Uh, oh, okay, um, this feels a little bite shitty. Yeah, because non-requirements means things that are, could mean things that are allowed, but that's not, you're really saying this are the things that are not going to be in the document. So they're not discussed literally. Um, Anyway, that's just uh, my opinion yep. on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, in general, I, I think the this requirements is going in the right direction and it keeps improving with each increment, so I would support it. So, thank you. Are there any more um, comments on the requirements document? Are there, is there any discussion on whether or not this document is ready to go for a working group last call? <laughs> we, we got a shrug from the front row. <laughs> um, okay, go ahead. Come on in, it's cozy. I, I just have a, a quick question about uh, section 5.3, it says uh, um, mode six should not be supported in the core of the protocol. Uh, all caps should not. Was there, uh, I haven't been tracking everything. Was there a discussion about whether this should be, a, could be a must not as opposed to a should not given, given you know, historically the difficulties that this has caused? Um, Amplification tax. I know that this topic has caused a lot of conversation. I don't remember a discussion of whether it should be, should not, or must not. Um, uh, do folks have any opinions? Uh, in particular, I don't know, Marislav, if you have an opinion on that. We, we also defined a Yang management stuff separately. So we could take that as our out. OK. That's true, Doug. Yeah, I I think it would be good if there was a decision by this group on the leap smearing thing to decide: Do we want to, as is suggested in this document, have some kind of enumerated list of smearing algorithms, or do we want to leave it as it is in the current draft, where you can get the offset to other? Time scales, but it's not saying exactly how the smearing is taking place. I think. Go ahead. Uh, so yeah. David here again. Um, uh, as to the smearing stuff, I would be open to doing a uh, draft for a spec that defines just a few of the most common options for this. Uh, I think we have an overview of the options that we discussed in the mailing list. Um, we could we could make a we could make as a, I think we should do it as a separate document, but we could make a document that specifies basically the most common ways of doing this and, and gives them formal identifiers for in the timescale field. 
It, yeah, as long as there was a, you know, other not, not otherwise specified on this list, um, because we're going to need that. Then if we had an enumerated list and there was a field, um, that, would, that would work. The, the field we already have, the enumerated list would then just be, let's specify a few options for that field. Um, the, the big question then is which other parties would be interested in, in that spec, but. Well, I, I think it would be useful actually to do, to do it just the way you suggested it. Yeah, in that case, I might take some time this week to make a draft. Thanks, David. James? Uh, that I, I would be happy to help with, with such a draft. Remember, the draft doesn't have to be uh, comprehensive. If there's a, a IANA registry for such, for such things, then you just need to specify a couple to start with and let interested parties in the future who have different timescales chirp up later. Okay. So going back to the original question, is there anybody uh, who is opposed or thinks this draft is not ready to go to working group last call? Oh, do, do show of hands, okay. Um, so, sorry to bring this up for those of us for whom this will bring up some bad memories, but do we have enough consensus on the mode question? Um, I think the working group last call is a, a good opportunity to solve that. I mean, I feel like there's been a lot of discussion uh, with most everybody in agreement. Perhaps we haven't documented it well enough yet. If we feel comfortable doing that through the last call, I'm, I don't see any problems other than right. that. So, so James, let me, let me ask you then, do you feel we should do a, um, consensus call on the mode question first before we do the working group last call? Sorry, uh, uh, to be specific about the mode question, you're talking about mode six remote monitoring? No. Because I thought for the other modes, we'd, we'd already knocked that one on the head last ITF. Uh, did we reach a consensus? I, I didn't think, I thought that was the one we noted that we didn't have consensus on, um, but and now I'm beginning to doubt, to be honest. All right. Uh, but I, I meant basically all the not non, uh, all the non client server modes. So one, two, uh, five, six, and seven. I'll double check with the minutes. Um, I, I know that we've discussed it. Um, I, I think, like I said, I think the working group last call might be a good opportunity to identify whether or not that's an issue we need to flesh out a little bit more. Um, yeah, m my understanding of it was is that, that based off of what we concluded last IETF was that uh, it, they, those modes were to be part of the specification, uh, but there's nothing prohibiting them from being included later by whoever really, really wants them. And, and that was also feedback that was given to me by, uh, by somebody else post IETF. I forget who exactly, I think it was Doug or um, Hal. Right. I mean, it's, it's basically the same thing we did with NTS. We decided to, to scope the, you know, the first version of NTS down to server client only. Um, and we never said the other mode, the other traditional modes of service couldn't be supported. We just said we needed contributions to support them and we never got those contributions. And so at this stage, I think for NTPv5, the core modes of service are server client and the, um, the other modes of service can be added um, as additional options at a later date once we get contributions, but we need contributions. Yeah. Perhaps I'm, I'm stating it a little too strongly. Looking at Eric, <laughs> he's got. I guess the, I guess the thing that went through my head was um, uh, when somebody would was developing an NTS v5 thing of their own or testing their own thing, they'll sort of like 
test what other people are doing and see if it works. And if it works, then they'll sort of assume that that's the way it's supposed to work, sort of irrespective of, 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 uh, of text, unless we're pretty clear about what it is exactly we want, is my suspicion. I, I mean, I, I could see that you could, you could do that with NTS being like a, a new sort of code base, but sort of evolving a V4 into V5 code base, you might just try to change a few things and see if it works and then find out that somebody has left on all the other defaults as well. And so other modes just sort of, just the practicalities of people like, like doing development by, by trial and error rather than, uh, than uh, reading, what, care, reading carefully what the specification says. Right. Um, I wonder if this is a, more of an NTP v5 specification issue as opposed to a requirements issue. Uh, that could be, yes, sorry, yeah, that's a good okay. idea. All right. Um, so with that, we will, um, somebody suggested a show, a, a show of hands. Do we want to do a show of hands or? Um, the problem is with our remote tools now, you need to do, uh, uh, I, I think we, given the size of our group, um, uh, I think, is there anybody opposed? No, to a last call, sorry. Is there anybody opposed to a working group last call for the NTPv5 requirements document? All right, excellent. Uh, so the next document um, is the NTPv5 protocol specification itself. Uh, Miroslav, did you have anything you wanted to say about the update? Yes. Uh, this new update uh, tried to bring it closer to the requirements document. Um, there is more text about leap seconds and time scales. Um, the leap smearing stuff there is still only one um, value for lip smear time scale, so there is no distinction made between the different algorithms. I think one of issue here is that some algorithms are configurable, and this means there is an infinite number of lip smearing algorithms that can be implemented and I know there are different requirements like trying to minimize the frequency error and so depending on your requirements you could use a lip smearing algorithm that is that takes more than one day or it could be faster maybe in a few hours. So I don't think um, a small number of values will work for everyone. Uh, another change was uh, a suggestion for clients to periodically refresh IP addresses. I think that was mentioned in the requirements document. Yeah, uh, there are a few other uh, there are a few remaining issues like what was discussed on the mailing list with the KISS codes. Mm. I'm not convinced that we need them, but yeah, we can discuss that on the mailing list. And there was another change, mm improved handling of delay corrections from transparent clocks. This, this was based on the work on the NTP over PTP document. So uh, basically required clients to verify the corrections before applying them. So many in the middle attacks can be limited. Yeah, uh, there is this uh, question, how should be the protocol negotiated between draft implementations that 
I think that needs to be discussed as well. Okay. Um, so there's several more contributions that are needed to flesh this document out. Um, do we have um, I know, could you, could I ask a small favor, Miroslav, could you just send like a short email to the mailing list saying here are the, th here are the holes that you currently see? Um, we could possibly, okay. if we could pull it out of what you just said, but it, it would be easier if it was in your words. Um, yes, not, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so I, if you could send an, a mail to the mailing list saying here's, here's the whole remaining holes, you know, and you know contributions and reviews welcome. Um, looking at the uh, folks in attendance, this is a good time to start reviewing this document. Has anybody, you know, besides the core developers, uh, uh, reviewed this document yet? You? I put you in the core developer case. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I did see a few newcomers come into the room. This is the kind of thing that's really helpful to get fresh eyes on a, on a document. So even if it, uh, you know, places where you think it is missing text or doesn't have all of the specification needed, uh, you don't need to be an expert to uh, review the document and say where additional contributions are needed. Um, so uh, with that, is there anything else on the uh, NTPv5 protocol? Oh, Doug is in the queue. Great, thanks, Doug. Yeah, a couple of minor things. Uh, uh, I think that it would be good to define root delay and root dispersion. You know, we all know what it is, but every year there's some new IT people that come along that are learning about it for the first time, and they would expect us to define that. You know, it's it's a it's an NTP defined thing, so it should be in the latest version of NTP or a reference to some other place. Um, so I don't know if Miroslav wants to comment on that. Now I have one more. Uh, I thought it was described in the document, or do you mean the current description is insufficient to understand it well enough for an implementation? Um, it, well, Maybe I'll look at it and and propose something online to you. If it, so okay. I, I thought it was a little incomplete. The the other thing is there is a section on uh, NTP v five negotiation with NTP version four. So it's basically a discussion of backward compatibility but there's really no discussion of versions before NTP version four, which I think is okay, but I think it would be good to just state that that's yeah. out of scope or something like that. Yeah, makes sense. Um, in addition to the root, delay, root dispersion, I think maybe a little more discussion on correction fields and security, you know, things that could be done uh, because it is a requirement that this is a secure protocol. And so maybe discussing options of having a separate security mechanism for correction fields, you know, with key management and everything that's, that's stated in the requirements um, or heuristic rules or something and anyways i think there could be a little more discussion there maybe i'll take that up on the mailing list as well okay yeah i think uh, there is no need to secure these fields because the impact is the same as uh, what a man in the middle attacker can already do by delaying the the messages so I think it's comparable in the impact, so 
and I also don't see how a switch, a network switch could do this transparently uh, while resigning the message. So I don't think that's practical for a hardware implementation. And that, that's a good point. And I think that would be worth stating for, for people that are sort of thinking about this for the first time um, and maybe suggesting that some heuristic rules at the client, is this a reasonable delay? Is it seem to be continuously increasing in some kind of ramp or something that looks suspicious? Yeah, uh, the latest version of the draft has some uh, checks specified for the correction values that they cannot be larger than the peer delay, basically the peer delay measured by the client when not using the corrections. So if those corrections appear to be larger, then they should be ignored. Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it again and discuss it on the mailing list. Okay, thanks. And and again, uh, as with the requirements, I, I think this, this document is going in the right direction. I think that the general structure of it that Yaroslav has created is the right one. Okay, so for this document, the next steps are to um, address some of the issues that Miroslav is going to post to the mailing list. Contributions are always welcome and for uh, as many people as possible to review and, and comment. Um, and we're a little bit away from um, we're definitely a little bit away from doing a working group last call on this at this stage. Um, I also want to thank uh, both um, Miroslav for his test implementation and um, David and, and Tommy for their work on uh, an implementation. If there's anybody else that's interested in working on an implementation, uh, that's the fastest way for us to uh, make progress on these documents. So um, this is an excellent, excellent time to uh, get involved in that way. Uh, so anything else with the uh, V5 specification? No. All right, next on the agenda is rough time. I could try to say something a bit more coherent about rough time. So rough time is, well, it's supposed to be rough time, a, a way to bootstrap a clock. So if you don't have any sense of time at all, you should be able to bootstrap a clock so you can do uh, verify, validate the TLS certificate so that you can run DNSSEC. And I, I sort of believe that we need some kind of way to bootstrap the protocol. It might be possible to get this working with MTS in a secure way. But, uh, rough time is a different way of doing it where you basically hard code a list of uh, public keys that you trust. So it, it's a different way of doing things. And I, I kind of like the rough time idea. I also work a lot with, come from the embedded systems part. So I like the idea of being able to have a small like device like this and get it a small device that might not have the resources to run TLS, which is needed by NTS. I like the idea of having a lightweight time protocol, secure time protocol for devices like these. So I, I see two really sort of useful places for something like rough time. Unfortunately, rough time right now is kind of stalled. A lot of the people who have been working on rough time, they have other things to do and they haven't had time for this. For example, Marcus Danzari is doing his PhD and he's, he's, he wants to finish that one. And, but I work for Netnode. Netnode as a company are very interested in rough time. We want to do something with this. I'm personally from the better side, I'm very interested in rough time. So. We will actually, from Netnode, try to spend money, actual money, on getting people together in the few, in the sort of next few months and actually start working on rough time. So, if you are interested in rough time or a protocol like it, it, it might be better to say, well, maybe do an NTP extension instead of, or try to get it into NTP version five instead of a new protocol. But some, I believe, something like rough time is needed. So. If you want to talk about this, well, you're very welcome to contact me. So I'm Kirsten Weinigel, Kirsten, and you can find my, if you go for my last name, you can find me or contact me through Netnode. So 
that's sort of call to action. Please contact me if you're interested because we want to work on this. And I also think Rough Time could learn a lot from the Kronos project because a lot of the <coughs> ideas in Kronos are applicable to Rough Time and I think Rough Time could help Kronos. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is there is an updated, uh, just just as very minor corrections to keep the draft alive, but there is a rough time-08 draft available in the, in the data tracker repository. Uh, and that is, it's also an excellent time for reviewing and commenting. So if you please comment on that, it would be appreciated. Um, next, any, so anything else on rough time? All right, so next we have the uh, NTP over PTP work. Uh, Miroslav, did you, I don't think there were minimal changes, but did you want to talk about that document and the status? Uh, yes, uh, there was a new version submitted. And it has improved the introduction, hopefully better explaining the key differences between NTP and PTP. And the big change was added support for PTP one step and to end transparent clocks. This allows NTP clients to reach the same accuracy as PTP. Uh, the transparent clocks uh, modify the correction field in the PTP delay request messages containing NTP messages. And uh, NTP clients can use this correction to correct the measured offset and delay, basically eliminating the impact of the network switches. Uh, and a new NTP extension field is required to return the correction of the request. So the client has uh, both the correction of the request and response, and it can check the, their value before applying it to the measured offset and delay, um, limit the impact of man in the middle attacks. Um, I tested this with two switches and it worked very well. So I think this is a nice improvement. Yeah, that's it. All right, are there any questions or, or comments on the NTP over PTP draft? Um, Miroslav, what do you think the uh, maturity of this draft is? Do you have any additional changes or? Yeah, there is still uh, the thing with the type of the PTP TLV. If there is an organization ID we can use or how, how this works when we request a, a value for the TLV. I'm not sure how this works with IEEE. So. Oh, perfect, Doug. <laughs> yeah, there, there are, it's possible for what is, we refer to as profile specific TLVs that don't require the IEEE to be involved. And that's a good thing because the IEEE moves at the speed of tectonic plates. So um, it's not strictly a pro profile, but they, there is already a, a an organization number uh, for the ITF that was used. I think it's, it's in, IANA has one um, and you can reference that and then you can create your own TLV number based on that. Um, Great, I, thank you. So, so you don't need the IEEE, so. 
just to uh, make sure I've got this correct, we get the organizational ID for the IETF from IANA. Yeah. And then we add to that our own TLV number that, that is paired with um, the number we got from IANA. Yes. Okay. And, and so 1588 and IEEE in general are not involved at all. Yep, that's correct. And you know, all, all the, like the ITU and other groups, I, IEC, they involved on this kind of thing. Okay. Um, so Miroslav, do you need any more information to do that? Or um, do you need any help beyond what Doug has provided? I'll hook it up and ask if I'm stuck. Okay. Yeah, if you if you look in the um, the latest version of 1588, you you should you know just search under under TLVs and that some I forget exactly where it is uh, explains how to create a TLV that's organization specific, um, and I can review it you know if there's any question. Okay. Thank you. So beyond that issue, uh, Miroslav, how close do you think this document is to a working group last call? Yeah, uh, with that result, I think it's ready for the last call. Okay. Um, so for all of the working group members, this is an excellent time to review that document and send any comments to the mailing list, please. I feel like I'm a broken record with this today. <laughs> Read our documents and comment. Um, so the last agenda item that we have, uh, or last update we have on our work is the NTS uh, for PTP work. Uh, Martin, were you going to give us an update on the status? <laughs> yes. Hi, guys. Uh, well, I have not prepared any slides for today because there uh, is not much news regarding NTS for PTP. Um, the current draft has no changes in content compared to the previous version, uh, just uh, some polishing. Uh, but the good news is um, I'm currently working on the NTS for PTP implementation, and I think I will be able to do the first tests in, well, maybe three months. So if all goes well, then the specification should be, become an official working group uh, draft document. So possibly at the beginning of 2024. So currently it's, it's not much, but we are working on it. So this is the current state of the art. Okay, um, so this work has been uh, stalled a little bit. Um, this is also an excellent time for people to review it. Uh, you were expecting a fairly, uh, fairly substantive update at some point in the future, right, Martin? Yes. Okay. Do you have not nailing you down, but do you have a rough time frame for when you're going to get to that? I know you've been finishing some other work. <laughs> Hopefully in the next few months. So <laughs> I also wanted to finish it, of course. Uh, so, so the last months, uh, the problem was uh, my PhD. So it takes a lot of time. So currently <laughs> I focus on this one. Um, and uh, hopefully okay. maybe in the three up to six months. So this is the pl common plan. That sounds, that sounds great. Thank you. Um, so with that, we actually have, we're at the end of our agenda. Um, our next face-to-face -face meeting is uh, in Brisbane in Australia. Uh, we are planning, hopefully, I, I know that we, uh, we had some issues this time. We didn't plan any virtual interims between the last meeting and this one. Um, we do plan to have uh, one or two virtual interims um, uh, between now and March. Um, and uh, other than that, if we, we haven't, uh, Dieter and I have not scheduled those yet. Uh, if you have any thoughts on specific times that we should avoid, please speak up. Other than that, um, I don't have anything else for today. Um, thank you to everybody who updated drafts and everybody else, please, please read the drafts. <laughs> and with that, um, if there's anything else, any other business from the floor? Nobody in the queue. 
All right. Uh, everybody have a lovely day and enjoy the extra time. I have one super pedantic uh, forward-looking question. Mm -hmm. This is NTP uh, version 5. The version 1 is 3 bits. Mm -hmm. What's it going to do a couple versions down the road?